Welcome to the I Got Fired podcast, where we talk about cutting edge legal issues for people who have been fired or afraid that they might be. I am the host, Tom Spiggle. I'm also the founder of the Spiggle Law Firm, where we represent employees in the D.C. metro region and throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, before I begin, a little bit of legalese, um, you know, because lawyers and all that. Uh, this is not intended to be specific legal advice to you. It's to be general information that uh, can help you in your your quest for legal services. Uh, if you need s advice specific to your case, then yes, you got it. You need to consult with or hire an attorney. Uh, so let's talk about today um, everybody's favorite topic. Uh, I say that facetiously. Trust accounts. Um, so this gets into the category of how you pay for attorney's fees. Um, the past couple of series, we talked about contingency fee relationships. Let's talk about when you have to, to write the check to pay for your fees up front, uh, which is most legal services. Um, so, and in doing so, many law firms, including ours, use something called a trust account. And what that is, is in, in uh, Virginia, it's called a, an IOLTA account. I think it's called that in, in, um, in, most, state, in most states. But it's essentially an interest-bearing account that is regulated by the state. So this isn't the law firm's you know, uh, uh, bank account. It's regulated by the state. And it's a place where lawyers can, um, can deposit money from their clients held in trust for the client and then the interest generally from those accounts doesn't go back to the lawyer or the law firm it's used by the state or the bar association to provide legal fees for people who cannot afford them so in many states you'll see um, something uh, called a trust account or your attorney will talk about a trust account so how does that work a trust account works is you will deposit a certain amount of money into the trust and there's no one particular right way to do this it depends often on the type of case it depends on the law firm you know for our cases uh, and this of course can change but at the time that i'm recording this for our cases unless it's a litigation matter then it's going to be four thousand dollars for the initial deposit into the trust account so you pay that money through your credit card you write a check uh, you get it from grandma, however it is that you pay it, and then the firm takes it and it deposits it into that trust account. Now, this is key to understand. That money that's in the trust account, unless the law firm has billed against it, and I'll talk about that in a minute, remains your money. So let's say that you know you come to the Spiggle Law Firm and you, you sign the retainer, you're ready to pursue legal action, you put the $4,000 into, uh, you know, you pay it, the firm puts it into the trust account, and the next day your legal situation gets resolved. Your employer falls in the sword, says, really sorry we discriminated against you. Here's everything that we owe you. Great. Everybody's going to be thrilled. You call the law firm and you say, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to need your help now, and we haven't done any work. At that point, the, we write a check or we have it, we get the money back to you. It is your money. Um this is different. There are certain types of payments, and you would need to be clear with your with your law firm, um, called retainer fees. And they're sometimes used interchangeably. There are some instances where you pay a certain amount of money just to have your lawyer available, or also they're called flat fees. You know, you pay for a certain amount of money to get tasks done. And depending on the, what the retainer says, um, you know, even if that task hasn't been com completed, if you pull the plug on it, not the law firm, but if you pull the plug on it, you may still owe whatever that flat fee is. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about where you are paying it on an hourly basis. This is the way we do it in our firm. It's, uh, criminal defense is another example. Uh, at family law, this is a really kind of one of the models for paying for your services. So the, the firm takes that money. Um, let me back up a little bit. This is different from, although there's nothing wrong with it or this arrangement, where an attorney does the work, submits the bill, and then you pay for it after the attorney submits the bill. <clears throat> the reason that most law firms don't do that is because uh, it, it exposes the law firm to a lot of risk, right? Because once we've provided the legal services, you know, we can't, we can't rewind those back. You know, we can't come, you know, repo our legal services. So if you say, yes, I really need an attorney, you know, I promise I'm going to pay, uh, uh, and then you don't, 
Yes, of course, uh, there's a you know, breach of contract. There are remedies for the law firm, but they tend to be pretty clunky, uh, expensive to pursue. So the law firm is uh, is in is going to be out that money, and it can be it can be thousands of dollars, particularly at the beginning of a case. They tend to go tend to be a lot of work right up front. So uh, law firms want to avoid a situation where you know you're behind on your bill, and you know it it it. it um, puts a law firm in a difficult situation. It puts you in a difficult situation. Nobody likes to be in a situation where their lawyer is calling them and telling them that he need more money, uh, which you don't have to to pursue your case. So, but for smaller matters, uh, you know, some firms will do that. But for bigger matters and most uh, firms of any size, they'll use a trust account. So let's get back to, so now you've deposited, you know, whatever amount of money it is in your trust account. That money remains yours until... The law firm does work on your case, whether or not they have transferred the money out. So typically the way that this happens is you put your money in trust. It's in that separate bank account. It is your money until the law firm does work. The law firm will do work and then will what's called bill against it. Okay, so let's say you've put, you know, $4,000 in the trust account. Um, let's say for whatever reason, your, your case is off to a slow start. There's not a lot of work to do. And the law firm, you know, the first week, Let's say the law firm bills twice a month like we do. The first week, the lawyer does $100 worth of work. Well, that $100 by law now belongs to that law firm. Now, it may not immediately transfer that money out of your trust account because you haven't been billed yet Um, because it would be administratively almost impossible to transfer it over you know, as soon as the work is done. So what will typically happen is you will be invoiced, you know, you'll get something in the, uh, by email in the mail says, here's the work that we did on your case and showing you the subtraction. So in this case, let's say it's the first of the month, your lawyer does $100 worth of work, you, uh, the law firm bills uh, that two weeks, that, that, two weeks later, and withdraws that $100 from your trust account and puts it into the firm operating account because that money is now the firm's because they have done that legal work. That $3,900 in the trust account is still yours. So if you decide at that point, like I don't need or want these legal services, the law firm has to give that money back to you. Um, so uh, that is typically how it happens is you'll get a bill that will show the amount of work that the law firm has done. Law firms bill all different kinds of ways, usually on some kind of time increment. So if you, um, uh, you know, the lawyer does usually in, in six minute increments, let's say the lawyer does 10 minutes worth of work, that's going to be a point two, right? And it, the law firms always round up. Okay, so it's going to be a point two times whatever the billable rate is. So this is going to be absurdly low. Uh, there are very few, if any, lawyers that bill at this. Uh, but let's say that um, that it's a uh, hundred dollars. All right. So a uh, you know a point two. That's going to be you know the the twenty dollars twenty dollars worth of work that your lawyer has done, and that's what's going to be deducted from your trust account. Now, here's another thing to remember. Many firms, including ours, um, we do something there where it's an automatic, there's an automatic payment into your trust account at certain uh, certain in- intervals. So for instance, you may have a case where let's say the, the initial payment is $4,000. And then in 30 days, you got to pay another, you got to put another 2000 in the trust account. And in 30 days after that, you got to put another 2000 into the trust account regardless of how much work has been done. Um, so, and this will be in your retainer agreement. So make sure you read your retainer agreement. So, you know, you're going to put your $4,000 down, regardless of how much work has been has been done, 30 days from now, <clears throat> another automatic 2000 into the trust account. Another 30 days after that, automatic 2000 or whatever the arrangement could be. Um, uh, it may be more than that. There may be no follow-up payments, depending on what the case is. But the important thing to remember is even if that transfer happens, you're like, well, I just paid $4,000. Let's say you didn't read your retainer agreement carefully. You didn't know the $2,000 was going to come out. You know, it's going to be billed, you know, taken out of your credit card. Um, so you put down the $4,000, 30 days later, another $2,000 comes out. And you're like, what? I mean, you know, I barely even talked to my, my attorney. That money is still yours. So let's say, and it's rare, but let's say that, very, that, that $3,900 is still sitting there. The law firm hasn't done any more work on your case. Under the terms of the agreement, you've got to pay another two thousand dollars. That within that thirty days, you pay the thirty, you know, the two thousand dollars. So 
now what's my math here you've got you've got five thousand nine hundred dollars in the account that is still yours so at any point you like you want to fire the law firm you don't want to do have the, you know you, you don't want to pursue the case um you tell the law firm that you are closing your matter which you have the right to do at any point and for any reason or for no reason at all it is your case now you still have to pay for the attorney's fees so if the attorney has done work during that time even though you later decided you don't want to take the case forward uh, that money is still going to be withdrawn from your trust account so money goes into the trust account remains yours until it's billed against if you have automatic payments you have to make into that trust account on a certain interval which is not uncommon um, that money also remains yours until it's billed again uh, against and you may ask well i've paid the four thousand why this automatic payment you know in in 30 days and another 2000 and another 30 days or whatever the arrangement is um that's because the law firm generally has, has looked at these cases and said you know what it's we're going to we're going to go through that four thousand dollars in the first 30 days because there's often a lot of work to be done you know you've got to put your case together we got to develop the facts going to be talking to witnesses going to be working on documents going to be doing legal research um there's just going to be a lot of work done that in that in that first little bit and nobody again wants to be in a situation where they're behind on their legal fees and the law firm is you know holding off on doing work on your case because you're behind on your legal fees and then you're in that the, you know the kind of a difficult situation because your case is half done you haven't gotten any results and now you're behind on your fees so it's an effort to try to avoid that to make sure we're dealing with that situation up front um, but the key thing to remember is that money until it's billed against in the trust account remains your money you can get it back anytime you want if you want to discontinue the legal services so i hope that uh, helps you understand the thrilling world of law firm trust accounts um, uh, i wish you the best of luck and i hope you get the representation that you need oh if you want to learn more about employment law uh, legal issues generally certainly subscribe to this podcast uh, leave us a review if you found this helpful because it helps other people find us you can also follow me on LinkedIn, where I post consistently about legal topics, particularly in the area of employment law uh, and, uh, and other related legal topics. Take care.